You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, we'll explore ways to drive more funding into Africa's tech ecosystem. As always, you can join today's conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can also follow my Twitter handle too. It's at Esther O. Awuni. A startup funding in Africa reached new highs in 2019, recording about $1.3 billion in investments from four 27 deals with Nigeria and Kenya, emerging the top destinations for startup investments. Collins Onwebu, Executive Vice Chairman of Signal Alliance, joins me as we explore ways to raise the bar in funding Africa's tech ecosystem. Collins, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. 1.3 billion US dollars just three, four, five years ago. It was just under just under 200 million US dollars. So a big leap, obviously, for the continent. But before we go into you know what we're expecting for uh, this year, let's let's just you know take a few steps back, take a look at some highlights from 2019, where we saw 427 deals, and of course Kenya and Nigeria accounted for about 81 percent uh, of total deals of total inflows of VC cash. Were you surprised, first of all, at the amount that came in, $1.3 billion? I think for the past four or five years, it's been trending up, but $1.3 billion is still... That's the first time ever it, it, it crossed it, the $1 billion. Compared, but it was bound to cross there, because if you see the trend, it's like $200 million in about 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, 2018 was about almost close to $800 million. So it was, it was trending up anyway, and I think it's going to keep trending up. So what else for you? What else would you consider as highlights for you? Perhaps the size of the deals, the, the, the preference, I think of seed and the Series A funding appear to have been a preferred mode for investors. Just some of those highlights that stuck out for you. I think one of the things that's making it a trend is that companies are moving to higher, higher levels of funding. So if you look at, if you are doing uh, seed, the amount you raise as seed, the company that raised seed four or five years ago are moving up the chain and raising more money as they keep expanding. So an InterSuite before that did, last year they did a $200 million deal. Uh, four or five years ago, they were doing deals maybe under $100 million, $50 million. Most of the companies that raised money have raised a little smaller amounts in previous years. So what you're going to see going forward, uh, the companies that raised smaller amounts, $5 million, $10 million in the past five years, mm -hmm. a few of them will come back and raise $50 million, they raise $100 million, and that will keep just keep pushing, yeah. pushing the, the thing up. And you know, another highlight for last year was the fact that Nigerian startups raked in the highest amount of, of VC cash coming in at $663.2 million. Uh, dollars. Just, just speak to that point. I mean, what's changing in Nigeria's, and, and more, the bulk of it obviously went into a fintechs. What would you say, for your opinion, is changing uh, in terms of how Nigerian startups, in, especially in the fintech, uh, you know, organizing themselves, putting themselves together, and, and the quality of the, uh, of, the, of the talent and, of course, even the services that they're rendering that, it, that is attracting these uh, VCs? Again, if you look at my former point, you notice that most of these fintech companies have been raising money for quite a while now, for the past four or five years. Smaller amounts, smaller amounts, but those amounts are rising. So it's going to the point where they're doing uh, serious rounds that, to help them scale, uh, maybe either nationally or globally. So we will see more fintechs in Nigeria raising larger amounts as they want to scale beyond Nigeria and scale across. So if anyone you see that has raised money, most times, even though they, whether they're in Nigeria or any other place, they want to raise money for Nigeria and expand to Africa or beyond Africa. Uh, I know a, a couple of them that have gone beyond Africa and gone global because they needed to raise money to do that. Look, Africa is the testing place for new kinds of fintech because of the challenges we've had with our infrastructure. So when some of these are done in Nigeria today at their test bed, when Nigeria succeeds, they take it outside Nigeria. You're going to see a lot of that happening down the line. No, it's interesting how, I mean, to, to that point, it's interesting how, how that uh, uh, we're seeing that evolve because, you know, many... It was just was it just maybe some 10, 15 years ago that we began to hear you know things like look let's have African solutions to African problems Africa you know needs to you know address its own problems and now we're beginning to see that happen and then it was you know started started small scale all of a sudden you know investors outside of the continent took notice because now and um, for many of these companies at some level they were able to sort of scale but obviously they needed more more funding more cash and now this is yes, what we have happen, yes. this is what we have uh, on our hands uh, do, but do you think that this at this stage it will continue at this stage because i'm just thinking it may come to a point where yes i mean we probably won't be able to solve, solve all our problems especially uh within the uh, the tech space but do you think that there's still more scope how much more scope do you think do, that we have to continue to explore it at that level at that level where we're still solving uh some 
problems that perhaps are peculiar to the continent? Look, the problems in Nigeria and the continent are huge. If you look at the infrastructure deficits in Nigeria, you need billions and billions of dollars to solve them. Uh, through the former channels, you might not be able to raise them. So any sector that allows itself to be uh, driven by tech, it's not easy to solve it because you can start very small. So if you look at, if there was a, a theoretical way of, of using tech to solve the road problem we have today, a lot of startups will go into the road problems and then solve it. But that is not possible. But there are a lot of sectors in Nigeria today where you can use tech to solve the problems that are fundamentally and fundamentally being hindering it. The second one, the fintech, I think that the banks lost an opportunity because, and then fintech people are taking advantage of that. Because if you look at banking, banking has not evolved the way it should have evolved. So people saw opportunities and fintechs are taking advantage of what banks should have done. And they cut this out of the, I mean, they, they, they let out of the bag. So no, there's nothing more they can do about it again. So this fintech you are seeing today, we eventually have the capacity to compete with banks. Because well, banks, I, were the, banks were the old thing. You know, I've had a, a couple of uh, bank CEOs here, and I've asked them that question, you know, because, you know, the, 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 what's, what we're hearing is that you know, very soon, or the banking of the future will obviously be very different. We probably won't have the brick and mortar anymore, and the, 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 the fintechs could overrun the banks. And many of them said, no, you know, we're already partnering with many of these fintechs, uh, you know, getting on board with the technology and working, working to them and to see ways in which, regardless, banks still remain relevant in the, in the future, regardless of where you know, the technology uh, path uh, takes us. Yeah. But I also want to bring up one point. It would appear that, uh, obviously, the bulk of the uh, investments went into fintech. There are other sectors you know, that are in dire need of such funding, and of course, we're seeing uh, talent in those areas. Do you think that there's already a crowding out effect? Because, I mean, we, we've seen, even last year, we did see some cash coming into uh, logistics, for instance, agri-tech, uh, ride-hailing services, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. I'm, but I'm just wondering, the bulk continues to go into fintech. Are we, is, is there a risk of other sectors uh, getting crowded out? Remember that th this money is owned by private equity companies, mm. venture capital companies. Uh, somebody, they feel somebody has made a clean, everybody now wants to get in there and have a play in it. So you see a ride out after some time that a lot of people try to take a position in the fintech industry in Nigeria. So I'm sure a lot of funding will still go into that space for quite a while to go. The second thing is that those who have raised initial money, $5 million, $10 million, as they keep scaling, they will raise more money. So you see that trend. But if you think about it, four or five years ago, it was e-commerce. And the biggest money then was raised for e-commerce. Um, well, there was a recession, and then it affected it. But that sector was also, I think at some point, it's going to come back. There are a lot of other sectors that are going to start raising money. I think energy is going to raise money, clean energy, uh, because again, we have a huge problem in energy. and. Tech is beginning to get into energy, so you're going to see a play in that space, and people are going to bet big. So you're going to see space, um, opportunities in that space. A lot of other sectors, health tech, uh, education tech, I think it just needs uh, startups to, to have a breakthrough that are fundable. And then people will suddenly find out that there are a lot of things to be done in that space. I mean, health tech is, health is big, so be, uh, there's a lot, a lot to play in that space. Uh, education is big, agriculture is big, but we're looking at agri-tech, so agriculture, agri-tech is part of agriculture. Once somebody figures out how to layer tech on agriculture, they become yeah. easy to fund it. You know, so I, I bring the, sorry to body, I brought this, I brought that up because, you know, those sectors, if we do see impact in those sectors, I mean, the ripple effects will be absolutely enormous, especially on the population, of, you know, we're seeing that kind of, that level of innovation and funding coming into agriculture sector, for instance. It's a labor intensive sector, it's a sector that the government, you know, is, you know is, is, has been supporting significantly to help boost the economy, health, for instance. You know, looking at our human development index, you know, the health index, the numbers are quite poor, you know, as mm -hmm. it were. So I'm just, well, I'm just wondering, if we do see that same vigor, you know, that same energy going into innovation in those sectors, then perhaps, perhaps on the, on the side of the impact investing, perhaps that could, could look, look, be the rescue. The, the private equity money is owned by pension funds and other conservative kinds of funds people put in. So nobody wants VC to think about on it. its own. VC yeah. itself, it's, it's risky. I mean, it, you put money in, in a company, yes, even if it's, a, it's fintech. The yes. whole concept of you know, venture capital, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a big risk. There's a lot of risk, venture. but you need to know who owns your money and the level of risk you want to take, right? Um, what happens sometimes is that once there's a proven success in an area, a lot of people get in there until another proven success comes in another area. The first thing that has happened, which is very good, is that even Nigeria as an investment decision for VCs has been proven. So that is a good plus for us. 
Uh, once that is done, right now, I mean, it was done in e-commerce, it's been done in fintech. It means that Nigeria is a place that VCs and private equity companies can look at for, for, for tech deals. Once that is done, the, the, the scope will keep expanding. So it's fintech today. Tomorrow, people are going to look for things to do in other areas. I know people who are doing, I mean, if you look at Andela, Andela is not a fintech company. Mm. A few other companies are coming up in that space because talent is an issue in Nigeria. And Nigeria is possibly a place where people can invest in talent and, and make money out of it. I mean, it's been proven again. So when deals come, people will get into it. Um, when deals come in agriculture, a few companies have come up in agriculture. We need to prove that model. But if that is proven, you also see money in that space. So we just need more of them, with, you know, obviously, with uh, the, right the right kind success. of innovation. Yes, but uh, if, because like, you look at, you're looking at from the funding side, but from the entrepreneurship side also. Mm that a lot of entrepreneurs are getting into fintech because they've seen other people succeed in that space. So a lot of people are going to keep going into that place. When people see people succeed in agriculture, they go into agriculture. When people okay. see health tech, we just need to see successes in those areas. And then you see that uh, the, opportunity, the good, good opportunities will come and then money will get into them. Hmm. Now, for the size of the, the investments that we saw last year, back to that $1.3 billion, US dollars, why Nigeria, for instance, couldn't have brought in that you know that money as a country, not mm. even you know as as a continent as it were, because between Nigeria and Kenya we saw it one percent you know uh, of the deals coming in. But you know, is it too early to be talking you know in those those terms, that kind of that kind of size of, of cash coming into just one country on the continent? Uh, I mean, if you look at what happened in, in the telecom industry, there was a time we thought that having one million lines was was large, and today we have over 100 million lines. That's what is going to happen in this space. We thought having raising $500 million was high. Um, now it's $1.3 million. We'll get the $1.3 billion. We'll get a point where Africa can raise $5 billion, $10 billion, and Nigeria can raise $1 or $2 billion. I don't think that is even big enough. The size of problems we need to solve in Nigeria requires that we raise more money to solve those problems. We've before we did for traditional companies to solve those problems. But what is happening now right now is that people are taking their chances and then trying to solve the problems they can solve and they're making success out of that. So I think that's what will drive it much. But, but what, will move the, what will move the needle? I'm just wondering. Look, there are a couple of things that move the needle. One, there'll be more deals because a lot of people are getting into, a lot of, Nigeria is a young population, so a lot of young people are getting into startups. A lot of them are going to fail, but they fear are going to come out through that and raise money. And once they start raising money, you know, the process of raising money, once you raise seed capital, you raise venture capital, you raise private equity capital, and it keeps rising. So there are a lot of companies today that have raised $1 million. Watch out for them in the five years' time. The successful one will be raising $100 million, $50 million. Once you have that, you get a point where there are 20 companies raising I know million. it's funny. We're not tracking. I'm not sure we're tracking those because last year, the, the, the guys who made the headlines are the ones that maybe got from $20 million upwards, $100 million US dollars. But a couple of them will probably just got, like you mentioned, $1 million or maybe just a little the, less. The border that started them, about, but they didn't make the headlines. I'm they, just wondering. But those guys are sort of like under the radar, but they're there. They're there. Look, five years ago, if you raise $1 million, you've been on the radar, on the radar not under the radar, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then last year, if you raise 20, two years ago, if you raise $20 million, you be on, you be it's in, it's just like the, the question is, I mean, the the thing is, the scale is changing every year. It's going to keep changing. Once somebody has raised two two hundred million dollars, two companies raised at least hundred million dollars last year from Nigeria. So we've broken that by. It's no longer a big deal. When what we're looking for, the next time we're looking for, maybe we're looking for five hundred million as a single deal. So if you're raising one million dollars today, you'd be under the radar for a lot of people. But they are, I'm an angel investor. There are those of us who look for companies that are at one, under $1 million, and we see them. So there are different kinds of investors are down are on the chain, right? Everybody will look out for who, who is interested in. So the private equity companies are looking for companies that will do $50 million and for $100 million. But as, a, as an angel investor, we have companies that raise under $1 million. So we see them early. Mm. We help put them up the chain for venture capital companies to see. Okay. Yeah. You know, another highlight for from 2019 was uh, local investors uh, also, you know, jumping in uh, uh, you know, to, to take part in the action. We did see about 24 M&A deals. Uh, that's a 50% growth compared to 2018 numbers. Just let's let's speak, let's speak to that point. Local investors and their participation. I mean, many times it's obviously it's the foreign investors with the dollars and everything. But then now we're talking about local investors getting in on the action. Look. Oh. I am part of the Lagos NG network. For the past six years, we've been preaching that local investors should get in early. Those who got in early enough are part of the deals that are happening, the large deals that are happening now. So some of these large deals you are seeing today, they were local investors and some of them. Uh, the large money comes from outside, 
But the best we can do at this point is to make sure that we invest early enough and become and okay. become part of the early investors. Uh, do we have enough money to to invest, say, look at local investors to invest $100 million in a company? I, I don't think we're at that level. We have to get the appetite. Perhaps it's foreigners that will show us that the possibilities that exist locally okay. and then we we'll Collins, I would like you to just hold that thought for us. We'll come back and talk more about local investments. If you're just joining us, Collins Onuegbo, Executive Vice Chairman of Signal Alliance, is our guest today on the show, and we've, we've been exploring ways to drive more funding into the tech ecosystem on the continent. Collins, thank you for your time so far. Let's pick up from where we left off. We're talking about uh, local investors, you know, getting in on the action. Uh, we did see significant uh, footprints last year, but speak to, you speaking to the point uh, where you said, you know, angel investors, they've always been there, but of course, when the, the big you know, cash comes in from outside of the continent, you know, those are the, the kind of, of the, that make the headlines. Yes. Uh, for the past five, six years, we've been part of this industry, growing the investment space as angel investors. But they tend that we can only do so much. One is that they know that we don't have enough local angel investors, so okay. we've been campaigning to increase their number. So Lagos Angel Network, we've been at the forefront of campaigning to make sure that we increase the number of angel investors. Because at the startup level, most of these companies you see today, the biggest problem they have is to have somebody to bet on them at that initial level. Mm. Uh, because it's too risky for venture capital companies Absolutely. and private equity companies. So, but I think that is also changing. So we need to get a lot of people who are interested in angel investing. Um, the second problem was there's always been MIA deals and private equity deals in Nigeria, but most of them were in oil and gas and manufacturing. So you could see a lot of deals in the oil and gas industry. I think tech wasn't the play for them. That is going to change. I mean, when, you, when you're a private equity person in Lagos and you see somebody from New York coming to do a deal in Lagos, you should ask, tell you that something is wrong with your, the way you're looking at the market. So a few of them are going to begin to look at market. So what I'm hoping to see down the line is that if a deal is done for Finding touch Street, for instance, there's a local player, maybe the local private equity company, with an international private equity company. In that way, they can get into deals that the large deals that have been done. And then some people are starting private equity and venture capital companies locally today in Nigeria right. to focus on tech or to focus on another area, a startup area. And that is good. So you're going to start seeing the effect of that down the line. Some of them are starting small, so they're doing the $1 million deals, the $250,000 okay. deals. And then when it goes beyond that, foreign investors mm. come. But at the, at the, uh, at the uh, angel investor level, I mean, obviously, you're the ones you are on the ground here, closer to these companies. What are those challenges you see, perhaps, for these startups at the initial stages? What are some of the common challenges or problems that you see them grapple with? Look, by nature of angel investing, you see so many companies before you invest in one. So you see all sorts of companies, and you invest in a few. And sometimes some of them work, some of them don't work. The lot of companies that start up, the rate of failure of startup companies is very high because one is that sometimes the, the founders are not educated enough to run the companies they want to run. So sometimes they're in sectors that are not going to scale and you don't want to invest in a sector that cannot scale. Um, sometimes the support system we need locally is growing, but the support system we needed before for startups, so things around SME development, things around uh, education of, of, of of, of the founders. I think it's growing right now. Even the legal support, the support them around legal work, uh, financial due diligence and other stuff. So a lot of things that, that you need to help um, in, in both startups and investors mm. to, to build that market. We're not there before, but they're growing. So, but as those things grow, uh, you, you find it's easier to, to get startups who can invest. And right now, I think the problem we have is capacity to invest in all the deals we see. Before there was a time, okay. Recently, when we couldn't find the kind of deals we wanted to, to, to invest in. But that is changing also. For these companies themselves, what about the, the quality of the talent that they need, the talent needed to help you know, build and even scale these companies? Yes, money is coming, but you know, going forward, you know, it has to be, the company has to scale, has to you know, run you know, profitably for, you know, for the VC cash. I'm just wondering, what do you see on the ground? There's a good and a bad side of it. Right now, getting tech skills is very hard. Okay. But for a country that has 20, 20 million years unemployed, to find a particular sector where you can get a job very easily is very nice. So I think that the way the talent problem will be solved is two ways. One is that there are going to be investors or startups who go into the area and solve the problem. Okay? We have a lot of It's not for want of people. We have a youthful population that can get into tech and they'll get a job. So I think that that problem is there right now, but it's going to be solved. 
I mean, Andela has tried something that is has worked. If people are getting into that space, we need to solve the problem by educating people who come out of schools and move them to areas that can employ people, so they can solve the problem. It's sad that Nigeria will have a talent problem. We have too much unemployment to have a talent problem, yeah. and it's not as if we don't have educated people. Um, so the problem is going to be solved, but right now there's a big problem because if you if you want to scale today, you need to hire. Um, tech talents are getting more expensive, and they're getting unstable. You're competing with more established companies in Nigeria, you are, start, you are competing with more established companies in any other place in the world. Because as a tech talent in Nigeria today, you can get a job anywhere in the world. You can stay in Nigeria and work mm -hmm. in Germany, you can stay in Nigeria and work, or you can leave, decide to leave. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a bad problem to have. It's also, as I can say, it's also an opportunity. So let's see how we solve it. For, so for this year, what are, your, what, are your, what are you hoping for? Last year, we had our first uh, unicorn. Uh, into switch crossing the one billion dollar uh, market value for and I, I hear there's probably an IP also in the works for the company and but are you hoping that we could create more could we we see more more unicorns this year I mean look the the whole fall of us who have been angel investors is to have unicorns where we invested at the least <laughs> where you invested of, <laughs> of course so, so, it should, it should, I mean as many as possible that should happen I'd be very happy <laughs> do I see anyone in the horizon It could, but I'm, I'm, uh, it could, but uh, I wish we can get to the point where we're short of a unicorn yeah. every once a year or something, you know. But I don't think that is. I, I would also like to see a broader, a lot of companies raising a large amount of money, even if they are not unicorns. I think that is that should be more representative of the company than the country than having one person that jumps out there and the rest mm -hmm. you don't see any other person anymore. I mean, I'm happy for it to switch, but I would like to see uh, as many companies as possible raising enough money. Whether they are unicorns or not, but there isn't enough money to, to scale and, and grow beyond Nigeria. And, and for this for this scaling, for those, especially those who got you no know, big ticket deals in 2019, uh, would it be too soon? And I suppose one or two of them or so, if I'm correct, are already having footprints outside of Nigeria. Uh, is that something we, you think could also shape 2020? Expansion. Yeah. I know cars. I know cars. Forty five is going to Ghana and one other African country. Should we expect yes. more of that this year? Yes. Uh, mines. I don't know their name. Now they raised twenty something million dollars last year. They are going to Brazil and somewhere else. Everybody, look. It, it is good to scale globally because you need to keep growing because you're raising money and you want to grow bigger. But one of the things that are driving the moving out sometimes is the venture money or the private equity money. Most most private equity companies like to see Africa as a single market, or they want it to, so they want it to move outside Nigeria. Um, so most most of the time, when they're raising money, companies are raising money to go to Ghana, go to Kenya, go to Egypt. Um, Nigeria is a large market, so it's good to to be sure that you, are, you have captured the Nigerian market before you go anywhere. But sometimes it's, it's fancy for private equity companies. But we also need to get the, build a new class of companies in Nigeria that want to go abroad. If you look at South African companies, for some reason, they, they learned how to go abroad. So they came to Nigeria, and they came to the rest of Africa. Nothing says Nigerian companies cannot dominate the rest of Africa. It's an opportunity, but it's something we have to learn to do very well. But I, I wouldn't advise anybody to get out of Nigeria until you're sure that uh, you've captured your local market. Uh, you know, you have to, you have to own your uh, local market before you go to another place. I don't think it's wise for companies to boost that they're in Kenya and Nigeria, I mean, uh, Kenya and Ghana. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, they're not doing so well. Mm -hmm. so are you expecting more? I mean, we're wrapping this up. I think we have about two minutes left. More exits, more IPOs this year. I mean, I know we talked about other sectors, but are there maybe some untapped sectors that come to mind for you that you probably would like to see a feature this year? I would like to see more done in energy tech. We have a huge energy problem, and energy tech could help solve some of that problem. Uh, I would like to see stuff in health. You know, again, the health industry in Nigeria needs to be challenged and maybe tech can challenge it. I need to see in the education space, there's a huge, we talked about talent, talent is education, it's also mm -hmm. part of education. So there's a huge space in education. The problem is that regulation pulls most of the business with old universities. Universities are not doing so well. Okay, so perhaps there's a space there to, to break that and then get a lot of funding into that space. 
we need better education, better quality of talent, and I think there's a lot of opportunity in that space. Okay, now for you, what what what, what is your five year projection for this? Because what, what it's as if we this this is a five year milestone, and we've mm -hmm. gone from just under two hundred to we are one point three for the next five years. What is your focus? What do you see? Look look into your crystal ball and tell us what you see. Uh, in five years, I would like to see Nigeria doing more than what Africa is doing right now. Hmm. So if Africa is doing 1.3 billion, Nigeria should be comfortable with 2 or 3 billion in a year. Still led by, you still obviously still foresee that being led by fintech? No, so, uh, uh, that would be sad if it's led by hmm. fintech only. But the economy has to have a spread. I mean, there's, there's need for startups in every sector of the economy to help the country. You cannot just have fintech. As the only sector. At some point, fintech will saturate, and then okay. we have to look for this and other areas. Otherwise, we cannot keep growing. Okay. Collins, we'll leave you there. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Pleasure having you on All the right. show. I've been yeah. speaking to Collins Onuegbo. He's the Executive Vice Chairman of Signal Alliance. Of course, we've been looking at venture capital funding Africa's uh, tech ecosystem. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. But remember that you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily and have access to all previous episodes of Beyond Market on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Market. And, of course, you can send your thoughts and your comments to my Twitter handle, too. It's at Esther O. Awoni. For myself and the team, it's bye for now.